All right, sweet. And then let me pull up my chat. Yay, he's doing good. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna pull up this as well. All right, okay, so are you guys ready for these mar this marketing strategy foundations training that we are doing today? It is, uh, like I said, it is in depth. <clears throat> we have a lot to cover. Um, so we are going to get right into it. Hey, Susanna, long time no see. <laughs> hey there. Good. Antoine getting the rhythm with work. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, if you guys can do me a favor and just mute yourself so we can um, make sure that we don't have any sound difficulties. All right, cool. <clears throat> so as you know, all month long, we are talking about mastering our marketing. We are, um, hopefully you guys got a chance to see the amazing, amazing lineup of guests. I'm just so blessed that all of these amazing folks are uh, going to be teaching you this month. Selfishly, I want to them to teach me as well. So you guys are getting my own selfish <laughs> uh, desires uh in that regard but um as you may have seen you know we're gonna have guests to teach us how to launch successfully the power of using ads how to master your messaging and also how to define your visual brand and those are very key components uh to make sure that your marketing is um you know appealing to your audience right so to prep you guys for all that our guests have in store for you, I am going to be training you this week on uh, marketing foundations, some, some foundational things that um, are primarily for those of us who are running businesses online. Um, many of these strategies can start to uh, take form offline in other ways. Um, so much of what you're going to learn, like I said, is going to be focused on online businesses, uh, but will be transferable in a lot of ways, the strategy behind all of it. So uh, we are going to touch on today in this training, we're going to talk about marketing mindsets to help you reframe your thinking around marketing. I'm going to run, run through two types of marketing strategies that every business needs to have. <clears throat> uh, we're gonna be giving you guys some direction and just kind of some answers and encouragement around maybe why your marketing efforts in the past may have failed and how to sort of avoid that in the future. And then we're gonna walk through some foundational ideas and tactics and um, to just get you guys started with your marketing strategy. But of course, I want you guys to attend as many of the sessions with the guest experts as possible. They are really, uh, they do this. <clears throat> I do this, not going to lie. Marketing is definitely my jam. But um, they're going to be, uh, I'm going to be laying a foundation and they're going to be really giving you guys that nitty gritty that you need to be successful. So uh, without further ado, we're going to pray and we're going to get right on into this. So um, let's go ahead and pray. I'm going to say hey to a couple. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Autumn, good to see you guys. Yes. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and pray. <clears throat> Father, we just come to you right now thanking you for all that you are, all that you do for each and every one of us. Thank you so much for your just um, consistent, loving presence and your consistent help um, just, just for being our everything. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. Father, um, I thank you for just getting us through this day and holding our hand through this day and all that we've accomplished this day. And right now, Father, we just cast every care on you that of things that didn't get done or other things that are going on. Lord, I just thank you that we can cast our cares on you and you, your word says that you will sustain us. Um, so I just thank you for sustaining us. Father, we invite you into this session right now. And Lord, I just pray that your presence would meet every single person right where they are, whether they are live right now, tuning into this recording, or whether they're on the way to the live training. Father, I just pray that your presence would dwell there um, in each one of our midst, Father, as we are gathered here um, in your name. And we invite you in. We ask that you would guide this session, Father. I pray that you would speak through me. Um, Lord, you know what each and every person who's watching needs to hear specifically as they're um, beginning to 
design their marketing strategy. So I just pray that you would help them to hear what they need to hear. Um, I pray that everybody gets exactly what they need out of this training, Father, and that you would just give me the grace to uh, teach this with clarity, um, help it to be brief but potent. <laughs> and um, I just thank you, Lord, for, for always coming through, for always showing up, for always um, connecting dots and dropping gems uh, every time we meet. So Lord, we just thank you. You are welcome here. Have your way. Uh, our eyes are open to see and our ears are open to hear whatever you have to speak to us today. We thank you for it. We love you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. All right, cool. So if y'all are ready, give me a ready in the chat. I'm ready, y'all. Shoot, I need, a, I need a type ready in here. I'm so excited um, to walk through this training with you guys. I know many of you, you know, you've been here from the beginning. Some of you are brand new, um, but there have been, uh, there's been a lot of training up to this point and many of you wanted to like get right into marketing and now we're finally there. Um, so I'm just excited. So we're just gonna go right on into it. And actually, <clears throat> I started this training uh, this week with a scripture. Um, I want to do more of this uh, to, to give us some context around what we are talking about. And I love this scripture as it relates to marketing um, specifically. Um, let me make sure I get everybody in here <clears throat> who's in the waiting room. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. So I know many of us are familiar with the parable of the talents, and I love it in the context of marketing uh, because you know, we do not, <clears throat> God gave us, right, these, these, these visions, these businesses, these ideas, uh, and, and in a sense, your business is your talent, right? And what we don't want to do is go through all the work of getting clarity around our vision, uh, niching down, doing the market research, designing and building an amazing offer, all of these things only for no one in the world to hear about it, right? Um, we know that the more eyeballs that we can get on what we're doing, the more impact that our offers can make. And I truly believe that that's why God led us into entrepreneurship in the first place. You have an impact to make. There's people out here who need what you do. Um, and so when we do all of this work, but then we decide, that we're not going to put as much energy into the marketing piece of it that we put into the building, the foundational pieces of it. Uh, we're really doing ourselves a disservice and we're doing our gifting and, and the, the vision that God gave us a disservice as well. So uh, I really want <clears throat> you guys to hold on to this um, as we are going through this because marketing uh, can be a lot of fun for those crazy people like myself who love marketing, but then for um, many of us, um, marketing is not as fun, right? It's not our, not our jam. And uh, so the, it gets hard. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, it gets hard. But uh, I want you to hold on to this scripture because it's, your business is your talent. And the more people that know about it, the more impact you're going to be, be able to make for the people that God created you to serve as well as your own family the, the legacy that you're building as well so those are things that we want to keep a finger on <laughs> when things get hard that this is your talent and it is my responsibility to go out there and make sure people see it All right so I want to touch on a couple marketing myths as we are getting into this uh, just to kind of set the tone and, and work on our mindset around marketing um, before we get into some of the, the tactical things that we're going to talk about. Uh, number one marketing myth is if I build it, they will come. Now, let me know in the chat if you've ever thought about this uh, or had this thought uh, previously. Like if I just build it, you know, put my website up, I'm, they, you know, somehow customers going to make it in. Uh, many entrepreneurs fall into that trap, right? Obviously, as you guys can probably tell by my tone, that is not the case, right? You got to build it and then you got to yell to the <laughs> mountaintops, right, that it is available. Um, because, you know, people, there's just way too many distractions out here competing for your target audience's attention uh, for them to have any reason to go out of their way to learn about what you're doing, right? They are not just going to magically come to you right so you truly have to go 
where they are <laughs> instead of thinking that they're naturally just going to come to you. And uh, when you get there, you got to spoon feed it to them, right? You got to make sure that it's extremely clear and what you're offering uh, is extremely clear to them. So that's myth number one, right? We have to do more than just build it. We have to do more than just put our website up, right? We have to actually do some activities that are going to um, help people to see what we have built, right? And that's where marketing comes into play. So myth number two, <clears throat> my audience knows as much about my offer as I do. And guys, this may not be a conscious myth that you have thought in the past, but sometimes we forget, right? that we have been sitting with our offer, with our vision, <laughs> with our ideas. Some of us been sitting on it 10 plus years, right? Um, we know everything that went into this thing that we put out into the world, but we run into a challenge when we're putting it out into the world and no one else has been with your idea, <laughs> with your, your business as much as you have. And we have to remember that, okay? So the only thing that your target audience, the people who find out about this thing that you're offering, um, the only things that they know about it are what you tell them about it. And I know that sounds really simple, but it can be really easy to forget, right? Like if you've been with something for a long time, just like any relationship, right? You've been with someone for a long time, you know them, you know their words before they, you finish their sentences. That's kind of how your relationship is with your, with your business, with your vision, right? But your audience ain't going to be finishing those sentences for you. Like you literally have to break it down for them. All right. And, and they need to understand it um, from your perspective. You need to help them understand it. Um, so one thing that I really, really love and that, that helped me, I forget who I heard say this. I think it was Morgan DeBond, the founder, CEO of Blavity, who said this, she always breaks down her content and marketing uh, so that it's so easy a third grader could understand it. Um, and I believe she even said a third grader can understand it as well as my 99 year old grandmother can understand it, right? You have to be so simple in your messaging that the, the, the two extremes in age groups can simply understand what it is that you're saying, what it is that you're selling to them, right? So again, this requires you to, to um, go from, you have a very high level understanding of what you're doing to now you need to really like break it down. You are truly the teacher of your offer. Uh, if you don't teach it, they won't learn it. So when you're working on your marketing efforts, you have to think about it as though they, this is the university of your offer, right? <laughs> they can't go to no other college or school to, to learn about this except what you give them, right? So you have, that is your responsibility to help them understand uh, what it means, right? <laughs> Tiffany said, listen, it worked for me today. Yes, simple language, period. Exactly, exactly. Simplicity is so key. And that really leads to um, one of my, ne my next point, the third myth that I want to cover, which is if I tell them about it once and nobody bought it, I guess it didn't work or it's over. Obviously, y'all, there is no, that you couldn't be any further from the truth, right? If everybody just stopped after the first time they told something about it, we wouldn't have half of the businesses that we know and love today, <laughs> right? So we, we know you have to keep telling people about your offer over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? Repetition is going to be so huge and vital in your marketing efforts because repetition is going to help your audience retain the information. Y'all remember in school, literally again, back to that third grade kind of a mindset, right? Your teachers were giving you the same principles, testing you on those principles, um, teaching you, training you over and over and over again. Wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. So you have to continue to repeat your information. And I know a lot of times you might feel like uh, when you're marketing, you're, you're giving all this information, you thoroughly taught them everything that they need to know. And you're like, why don't they still get it? And it's because, you know, <laughs> they, they need to hear it again. They just, it, they haven't caught it yet. Um, I believe the, um, the, 
there's a fact out there that someone has to hear your message at least seven times before it actually starts to sink in, before it actually starts to click. Um, I should have written that down actually in the slides, but if you're watching this, you'll hear it um, seven times. <clears throat> So consistency is so, so, it's going to be so key and vital to your marketing efforts um, because consistency uh, in repeating the things that you're telling people about your offer is going to build their trust of you uh, and make them more likely to engage with your offer. But then also, as I mentioned, it's going to help them actually retain that information. And the other thing that is extremely important to remember is that people don't read. And I actually repeated this, y'all. People don't read. Get just write it in the chat so that you just <laughs> keep it, um, you know, top of mind. People do not read. I'm gonna say it one more time. People don't read. All right. So you're putting stuff out there, <laughs> and you're wondering why no one gets it. No one understands. It's because they don't read. Okay. That's why you you never have to worry about. Oh my gosh, like am I telling them something too much? Or, you know, I just told them about this the other day. They probably didn't even read it. Let's be honest. Let's be real. They probably don't even have a clue what you wrote again. And it goes back to no one is as intimate with your messaging, with your offer, with what you're doing, your, all of your efforts. No one is as intimate with what you're doing as you are. Okay. So when you think you're thinking that, you can't say something again because you know you don't want to bother people. I'm telling you now, that is not something that you need to be concerned about because people do not read. <laughs> and even if they do read it, I guarantee they haven't read it seven times enough for it to sink in, right? So I'm glad y'all are giving me some people don't read in the chat because I want I want y'all to really get this <laughs> uh, and, and to be encouraged that you know again. Repetition is huge. You have to continue uh, pushing your offerings. You have to continue selling your offerings consistently in order to, uh, to, to make ground, all right? So uh, some really good news, guys, is you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting now. Again, if you've been here from the beginning, you've gone through the trainings, you've built out the foundation that you need, um, all of this stuff that you're doing now and even what we're going to be doing this month are the heaviest parts <laughs> of of this process right so <clears throat> like i said you joined tribe which yes this is like a huge step congratulations on joining a community that is going to help get you together help you develop the strategies that you need to put in place for your business um, so that's a huge first step that you took you did that um, you've already built a strong foundation. And even if you're watching this and you haven't gone through the trainings previously, you will. All right. So, so that is the other, um, piece of heavy lifting, right? All of this hard brain work I'm forcing you to do this market research I'm forcing you to do. I'm telling you, you're going to be so happy that you did all this work because, um, it is so worth it when you can just put all the pieces together into a marketing plan. Uh, that really works for your business, okay? <clears throat> so, and that's really what we're going to be doing is putting those pieces together. Um, all you need now is really the strategy and the right tools. Um, so um, that's what we're going to be giving you this month. And I'm telling you guys now, I know many of you, I posted that question and tried today, like give me a word that describes how you feel about marketing, something like that. And many of you said overwhelmed, lost, um, I hate it, <laughs> all of those things. And um, I want to encourage you that um, you, we're going to help you build out a strategy. And I believe that one of the biggest reasons why we feel so frustrated and so lost and like don't know where to start with marketing is because we just don't have a strategy in place. Um, but once you do have a strategy, um, you know what you're doing. <clears throat> you're in control, right? Um, and, and you're going to feel so much more, um, you're going to feel so much more in control and much less like you're just throwing stuff up at a wall to see what sticks. Um, uh, you really just need a strategy. Um, and, and once you do that, that's that strategy, right? Which is a lot of what we've been doing to this point is that heavy lifting that I'm talking about. And once you get that strategy in place, it's really going to be just about tweaking from there, right? Once you build out your marketing system, 
um, your goal is going to be just to continue to test and optimize that system, right? Um, but you're but you're not going to have to just like rebuild something from scratch, <laughs> and that's what a lot of us are doing right now. But I just want to encourage you guys that once it's built, you guys are going to be in such a good place, such a place of control, uh, and a place where you feel like you are able to um, just you know fly, <laughs> hopefully. Um, <clears throat> So I want you guys, um, just as we kind of close out this mindset portion of the training, uh, to just, you know, take on this affirmation um, and give me an amen if you agree with this, uh, that somebody out there needs what I have to offer. And, you know, say that right now out loud. Um, say it a couple times um, because I want you guys to remember this again, as it gets hard, <laughs> uh, as, as it just, you know, becomes a struggle and all of the things happen, um, somebody out there needs what I have to offer. Um, this is truly one of the biggest things that drives me and inspires me to continue uh, to figure out my marketing and to push and promote what I have to offer. Um, I haven't been pushing and promoting as much lately because I've been building, <laughs> but I will be back out there real soon. But um, you know, every time, every single time someone comes to me and they're like, oh my gosh, I needed this book. Oh my gosh, where has this community been all my life? It is more fuel to that fire of the, how many more people are out there with that same exact testimony. Um, and I really, I just want you guys <laughs> to, to hold on to that, right? Um, God is preparing somebody's heart right now so that when they see your offer, um, as a result of your marketing efforts, they are going to know it's for them, you know, and, and they need you to do the work <laughs> to put it out there. And the beautiful thing about it is when you do do the work, that's when you give God a chance to do what he do. Okay. Cause he going to sprinkle all kinds of beautiful, you know, favor and <laughs> helping do the things that you can't do that you can't afford to do yet. Whatever the case, like he's going to add power to your efforts, but you got to give him something to work with. Right. So that is, that is why I just, I love marketing. I'm passionate about marketing because um, as I've said before, I'll say again, your business exists to solve a problem. Uh, and if there's a problem out there, it means that somebody's out there struggling without what you have to offer. And, and that's the beauty of marketing is it helps connect you to those people. Um, marketing does not have to be an evil, annoying thing when we think about it um, from the standpoint of like, this is what's helping me to get the help that I have out to the people who need it. Okay. So I encourage you guys. Um, hold on to this affirmation. Somebody out there needs what I have to offer. They're waiting on me to put it out there, right? <clears throat> so I need to give God something to work with. I need um, to take this marketing stuff seriously. I need to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, I need to get comfortable putting myself out there, selling myself, selling my offers, right? If, if one person needs it, I guarantee we are, I was just talking about this in the new member mixer. If one person needs it, I'm, I guarantee there's probably 10,000 more who need what you do, who have that same problem that your business solves. And, you know, they're not going to find out about it unless you market it, right? So you got this, you can do this. And I just want you guys to, um, to hold on to that uh, mindset piece as we keep going. So um, you guys gave me some amens in the chat. So I'm trusting that you guys are tracking with me. So we're going to move right along to the two marketing strategies that I promised I would give you guys in this training today. Um, we're just going to get right into it. I'm not even going to, you know, you know what? Basically, now that we've dealt with your mindset <laughs> around marketing, we can talk about um, the strategies that you need to have uh, for your business. So the first strategy is your ongoing marketing strategy. And I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to break these down here as we go along in the training. Um, but if you're taking notes, the first strategy is your ongoing marketing strategy. The second is your launch strategy. And so, like I said, we're going to talk about this a little bit. Um, but I want to touch on this first. Um, many of us give up on our businesses too soon because we launched them, right? We launched our product, our business, whatever the case. But when the launch was over, party was over, all the people went home, uh, people stopped caring and people stopped buying. And what, um, I know that this happens. I've, I've 
I can't even count the number of times that I've heard someone say this. I put my thing out there, but you know, nobody cared. And you know, so I just moved on. I thought it wasn't good enough or whatever piece of defeat that you held on to, you thought that what you had to do wasn't good enough. But what I want to encourage you guys with is, is that you may not have had a bad product at all, right? Um, sometimes you can get the, the problem that you're solving off. Maybe you weren't communicating it right, whatever the case, but at the core of it, you may not have had a bad product at all. You just had an incomplete strategy. Um, and, and that's what I believe many of us are struggling with is not that our businesses <laughs> are, are not built well, not that our product isn't amazing and, and can help a lot of people. It's just our strategy isn't complete. And that's why I am just so passionate about this. I mean, y'all can probably tell I am like super passionate um, because we don't do all this work just for it to just fall flat, right? We want it to succeed. We want it to make the impact. We want it to bring in the coin <laughs> that we want it to bring in, right? So. I just want to encourage you to know that um, the solution to just making sure that you um, achieve that success is that you just have to have both of these pieces, right? You have to have a launch strategy, um, but you also have, an on have to have an ongoing marketing strategy, all right? So I want to kind of break this down for you guys and just share um, just from my own recent uh, launch strategy as well as my ongoing marketing strategy for the uh, Big Ideas Food Tribe. Um, and like I said, we're going to continue to break this concept down, um, but hopefully you guys are taking notes. Um, and again, slides will be available after the training ends, so you'll have access to all of this material as well as the recording. So for my launch strategy, right, just going to break down what I did for my launch versus what I do on an ongoing basis. Um, I promoted a free webinar to my email list. Again, this is for Big Idea Food Tribe. Uh, I gave a massively valuable training to everyone who attended. After the training, I shared a sales presentation about the community and I invited people to join, right? I asked them to buy the membership. Uh, and then anyone who didn't join that day, they continued to receive emails from me inviting them to join by a specific deadline, okay? And one of the keys to the difference between these two strategies is that their uh, launch um, has a very specific start and end date, right? It's a linear kind of a, 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 a strategy versus an ongoing marketing strategy, right? So, so I'm going to walk you guys through like, what is my, what am I doing um, on a day-to-day -day -day basis to sell Tribe, right? When I'm not launching Tribe, all right? So, and actually this is a strategy that I'm building. Tribe is new. I'm actually building out uh, this this funnel uh, to to accomplish this strategy right now as we speak, but so that's why this is kind of written in future tense. Um, but I will run ads uh, to my book sales page. So I'm going to be promoting the book. The book is going to kind of serve as my first entry point uh, into my funnel. Uh, when people get to the sales page my sales page and the checkout process that I build will hopefully convince them to buy the book, right? Once they buy the book, they're gonna land on a thank you page and that thank you page is gonna be like, great, your order's coming. By the way, we have this amazing community. Did you wanna join right now, <laughs> right? So I'm, I'm taking you through, this is how I'm just gonna be running ads all the time to the book, getting new people into my funnel, telling new people about the book and everyone who buys the book is gonna hear immediately about the community, all right? If they don't join immediately, um, I now have their email address because they bought the book, right? So I will continue to nurture them via my weekly newsletter. Uh, and then I'm going to send them periodic offers to uh, join the community um, as well via email, right? So this ongoing marketing strategy, this is how my business makes money 24-7, 365 or in my sleep, right? Um, when, you, when you hear people talking about I'm making money in my sleep, it's because they set up in a system that is bringing money in for them on a consistent basis to where it doesn't require a lot of effort on their part uh, to make it happen. So hopefully this is making sense, guys. Let me know in the chat um, if this is making sense. Give me a, a, a <laughs> Antoine gave me a yo. Give me a yo if this is making sense in the chat. Um, and, and as always, if you have questions, we will definitely touch on those at the end of the session. 
Um, okay, good. <laughs> oh my gosh, now I got that Chris Brown song in my head. Yo, ooh, I'm sorry. Woo, I'm sorry that y'all had to hear that. I apologize. Um, so again, back to just, we're talking about these two marketing strategies, right? So your ongoing marketing strategy is how you're gonna make money consistently, right? Whereas your launch strategy is how you're going to make money or whatever your specific launch goal is, um, how you're gonna hit that goal in a short period of time, right? Um, so, you know, just to give you some examples of what businesses use launches to do. And I really wanted to, to clarify too, because we use this term launch a lot and a lot of us use it incorrectly. Uh, we're talking about launching our business when really we just mean we're publishing our website, right? Launching is an actual strategic, systematic, <laughs> scientific process uh, that, that you're getting people to, toward a goal. Um, publishing your website does not mean you've launched it, does not mean you've launched your business. Um, so I really want to hone in on, on, on what launching really looks like. Um, and this is also a plug for the training that's coming next week from Taylor Mills. She is going to whoo, get y'all together on uh, how to launch in depth. But just to give you guys uh, what's your appetite a little bit for it, many businesses use launches to generate buzz around a new offer, right? So I've got a new product out there. I need to just like get a bunch of people to buy it, to know about it. Um, I have a, there's a movie coming out, so I'm running commercials to a trailer, um, right? I have something new, a new product that I want people to know about. Uh, or, you know, may, businesses need to generate a lot of income at once, right? They are looking to hit a financial goal. So let's go ahead and run a launch because when I run a launch, I can make a lot of money in a shorter period of time, uh, maybe more money than my sort of ongoing marketing strategy and funnel is producing for me. All right. Um, another reason businesses might use launches is to get beta testers. That's why I launched a uh, tribe internally to my email list. I needed to get uh, you guys, my day ones in so that I could start to test and try out this um, product that I had built. <laughs> you know, I had to kind of figure out, um, get work, start to work the kinks out, right? So um, launches can be used for a number of things, but the key uh, thing that sets them apart from an ongoing strategy is that there's a set goal that they're trying to hit during a set period of time. Okay. Uh, and, and it's important to note here that launching is a beast. <laughs> like there's just no other way to say it. It, it can take a lot of energy, a lot of resources, um, but because it can produce a higher output of results over a shorter time period, that's why people do it, right? Um, I guarantee if you talk to the majority of online business owners, anyone in marketing, they're going to talk, tell you launching is no joke, right? It, it, it's, it's, it, ain't, it ain't for the week. <laughs> but because of what it can produce, um, you know, we continue to do it um, as, as needed to, to grow our businesses. So most of the time you're going to see businesses only launching one to two times a year. Some people launch um, more than that, but um, pretty consistently because of the amount of energy and effort it takes, um, you're going to not really run like a traditional serious launch um, that many times a year. Just It's just a lot of work. Um, but so we've talked about launching, right? Um, and, and this is where I think many of us kind of go wrong. We, we do, we, we, we do something to launch our businesses, but we never built an actual system to generate income on an ongoing basis. Right? So that's where you get into that place where you, you, you launched it, you put it out there and you know, you, maybe you made some sales, it was great. And then it's over. And then it's like, okay, great. Now what? I don't have, I mean, how, now I got to like launch again or, or, or many people will go and create a whole new product because they're like, well, I got to, you know, get a bunch of people interested in what I have to offer again. And, you know, that is a, a method. That is something that you can do. But I strongly, strongly encourage all of us um, to generate an ongoing marketing strategy for making money consistently so that even when you're not launching um, or even after a launch ends, you are still consistently bringing in new leads, new people are finding out about you and you're converting them into paying customers. 
guys, this is so, so important. And this is why so many of our businesses struggle because we don't have this. And I don't like that. <laughs> we need this, right? This is, this is truly your business right here. Is your business able to automatically on autopilot bring people in and, and, and create customers? And if not, you need to figure that piece out. We need to build that. Um, so that's what I really want you guys to be building um, this, uh, this month uh, as we go through these trainings, okay? So um, whereas a launch strategy is going to be trying to hit a, uh, a set goal over a set period of time, uh, an ongoing marketing strategy, as you can imagine, is more built around monthly, quarterly, annual sales goals, right? Uh, we're optimizing our marketing machine or our funnel um, to help hit uh, a monthly goal and a, a quarterly goal, an annual goal, that kind of thing. So you can kind of see the time difference uh, between these two strategies. Um, and, and this is something I want to give y'all. And y'all, y'all take this and hold on to this, do with it what you will, but launching is not required. Okay, but having an ongoing marketing strategy is, um, and I know that sounds a little controversial, controversial, but if you never launched a day in your life, but you built <laughs> an ongoing marketing strategy and you're, you're learning how to uh, generate new leads and convert them into paying customers uh, consistently, that's your business right there. Like if you wanna stop there, fine. You do not have to launch, but you need to have a machine making you money um, consistently. That's how I feel about it. Now, launching is really is, you know, obviously it's recommended, it's suggested, especially when you have a new offer that you're trying to get into the market. Um, but as we do like office hours and things like that, I'm going to be hearing, you know, what you guys' plans are. And I may not recommend a launch. Um, I may just recommend focusing on building that marketing strategy because launching, as you guys are hearing, um, it, it's a whole nother animal, right? And you may not even have a serious goal like that, that you need a launch to help meet for you, right? You really, your real goal, many of us, our real goal is like, I need to make this money consistently. I need to be hitting this amount of money on a consistent basis in my business. Um, and so I probably, I'm gonna just let y'all know now, I'm very biased toward um, building that ongoing marketing strategy first, and then if you need it, we'll outline a launch strategy. Okay. So a couple notes there on that. Let me know if, if you guys are still with me in the chat, give me a three in the chat, just to let me know you guys are still here. Um, my sound is still good. I'm gonna take a drink. Okay, perfect. All right, we're actually doing pretty good on time. So um, we'll just keep rolling. So what you've learned so far uh, is we've touched on marketing mindsets, right? To help you reframe. Uh, we've done, uh, we've walked through two types of marketing strategies that every business owner needs to create, right? And we've also kind of, hopefully you guys have gotten a sense of you know, how you may have experienced failure in the past um, and because of an incomplete strategy. And um, now you know how to avoid it in, in the future, right? It's creating uh, these two strategies. Um, so let me know, give me um, you know, something in the chat to let me know that those three points, you feel, feel good about them. Um, just say feel good in the chat or something. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and drop those in the chat now as well. Um, but what we are going to discuss here um, as we wrap up uh, is still going to, <laughs> you said I feel good James Brown voice. <laughs> now I'm going to have that in my head. Y'all don't want me singing James Brown. Um, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so we're still going to, <laughs> we're still going to touch on um, the foundational ideas and tactics to get you started with developing your marketing strategies. Okay. Um, so this piece, um, you're going to see, I'm going to kind of go through this relatively quickly because this is meant to give you just to sort of whet your appetite, start to get you some ideas um, flowing and to start to show you kind of a, a way to structure uh, these different strategies. But I really want you guys to, um, you know, you're going to need to kind of spend some time to kind of think through your specific strategy. Um, and we're not going to have time to go through that individually, obviously today. Right. But um, I'm going to be wetting your appetite, giving you some ideas now about launching and ongoing marketing strategies. Um, 
And then I want you guys to continue to come to the trainings this month, come to office hours this month, because I will be in there. Literally, we will, we will talk marketing. We will talk about your unique strategy. So please utilize the resources that are available to you. Um, so just giving you that disclaimer, we're going to walk through this relatively quickly. Um, so we're going to talk about ongoing marketing strategy real quick, and we're going to talk about launch strategy. And hopefully you guys are even seeing here visually. Um, sorry, the branding isn't that great. I just grabbed something offline, so I left the copyright. But um, you can see here ongoing marketing strategy is something that's happening all the time, right? That's why it's kind of in that cyclical uh, sort of shape versus launching is, is linear. It's got a start and an end date. All right. Um, but I really, 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 I can't stress this enough. I want you guys to make sure um, that you come to How to Launch with Taylor Mills next week. She is going to just, whew, she's bomb. She helped me launch Tribe. She works with, uh, gosh, Tara Reed, Apps Without Code, who brings in, I think, over a million dollars a year. And Taylor has built the funnel that is helping her do that. Um, she's just, beyond phenomenal <laughs> um and i if you guys can make it please 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 make sure you attend uh that training because it's going to um, be really really good um good <laughs> Adiola. okay i love it all right cool so uh let's get into ongoing marketing strategy real quick i'm going to fill in these blanks for you guys and again you will have access to the slides so don't try to feel like you have to rush and write everything down because there's going to be a lot in here um, so the first piece that we'll touch on with ongoing marketing strategy is the awareness piece, right? This is where you're generating new leads. Um, every single <laughs> strategy has to start with, I need new people to find out about me. Um, raise your hand in the chat if you have been struggling with, like you feel like you're always posting on social media, but nobody's really biting, nobody's really buying anything yet. Um, you feel like, you know, it's just not really going anywhere. All right, cool. Yeah, I got a couple hands raised. Um, that's because, you know, one, social media is it's very difficult to get everyone's attention in the algorithms, people don't see a post, all of the all of the things, right? So we have to figure out a way uh to get new people into our pipeline, to get fresh people into our pipeline, um, so that uh we can start to um you know, get, gain the traction that we're looking to gain, right? So awareness is huge. Awareness, um, each of these are going to have like the channel, right? When I'm referring to channel, I'm talking about where are you doing these activities? Uh, and these, these activities are mostly public, right? You're, you're, you're going out into the public space in some form, whether it's on social media, whether it's at an event, um, whether you're doing a TV commercial, right? You're going to the public and you're trying to get people to find out about something that you have to offer. Uh, and typically it is going to be a lead magnet of some sort, right? So um, the awareness portion of the strategy, ongoing strategy piece is all about getting new people into your system. Um, you do that via content, right? Maybe you're going live on Instagram, posting, um, maybe you are running like a, a talk show, some sort of a recurring C series every Monday, you come on and talk about mindset, something like that, right? Um, trying to get new people to find out about you. Uh, maybe you're using ads. Uh, maybe you're going to speak at events, right? Or on podcasts. Maybe you're guest blogging. Maybe you're writing thought pieces on Medium or LinkedIn, right? Uh, maybe you actually have some uh, PR support um, that they are working actively to get you plugged into a uh, magazine, editorial, things like that. Uh, maybe you have an affiliate program, right? Where you've got uh, partners who are uh, going out on uh, advocating <laughs> for your product on your behalf. They're telling people about it and they get a cut of everyone who buys through them, right? Or maybe you have influencers. Uh, maybe you send them a free product and you ask them, you know, to hopefully share it if they like it on their social media. and then all their followers start to find out about you. Um, I definitely used influencer marketing with my book launch, and that was very, very huge for me. Um, so all of these things are activities, right? I didn't, there's so many ways that you can generate new leads, but these are ways that you're going to get the message out about something that you're doing, right? 
um, that is not just to your specific audience, but it's getting to people outside of your specific audience to bring new people in to your audience, okay? So the awareness piece is bringing new people in. Um, likely you're gonna have a lead magnet of some sort. And so we're gonna talk about that next, right? So your lead magnet, the, the many, I'm sure many of you have heard this term. If you haven't heard this term, this is basically something that you're giving away uh, free or, you know, there are lead magnets that are paid, um, but you're doing this for the purpose of getting someone's email address so that you can get them off of social media and onto your list. Um, email is going to convert so much better than social is. Again, if you're having difficulty converting social media followers uh, to actual paid customers, it's because it's so hard to get a sale off of so it's it's so much harder to get a sale off social media when they have not fully invested in you right but when they're on your email list they've opted in they are interested in what you have to say uh and it's it, you're you've got a lot better chance of converting uh of converting folks so you really want to do your best to get people off social media guys so many of us i i was this for a long time so many of our businesses only exist on social media and that is a very very dangerous place to be guys like you have got to build your own platforms <laughs> so that if instagram decides to just go bankrupt tomorrow or something crazy happens you know heaven forbid you have an email list, which is something you own. Can okay, nobody take it away from you? Uh, you have a platform offline. I have this community offline, right? Um, so that I don't have to have Instagram, right, to survive. Um, this is very, very important. So that is the purpose of your lead magnet, guys. You need to get people off of social, get them onto your email list. So um, you guys have seen many of these, many of the ads that you see floating around. They're offering some kind of a freebie. Maybe they're offering a webinar. Uh, maybe there's a, a free training and a worksheet. Maybe they're offering a discovery call or maybe a product. Um, for my uh, funnel, my ongoing marketing strategy for selling the community, my book is my lead magnet because I want people who are, um, it, it, my thought process is if you buy the book, you are interested in investing in yourself. Uh, and those are the types of people I want on my email list. I don't want a bunch of people on my email list who only download a bunch of freebies and never do anything with them, right? I want people who put their money where their mouth is because those are the people that I can help the most. Uh, and those are the people who are gonna continue to invest and pay me um, for what I need, right? Um, yes, 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 yes. So lead magnet examples, again, there's a million different examples. I'm sure I'm hoping you guys are getting ideas for what your specific solution, your specific case uh, you can do. But the idea is to get people off social and onto your email list. All right. Once you, they're there, that's where you're going to be engaging and nurturing them in some way, shape or form. Right. Um, I have a weekly newsletter where I uh, many of you guys know about the newsletter, right? That's where I'm just continuing to give value to everyone who's on my email list and just loving on people, right? As I say here, um, it's just not cool to just only sell to people, right? Um, and, you know, you have to do more than just sell, right? We, we, we need to nurture, we need to engage with people, um, we need to care about people, <laughs> Uh, especially as Christian business owners, right? Um, this is a very, very important part of um, your ongoing marketing strategy is coming up with some way to love on people, give people value that they need and just nurture them, right? So lots of things that you can do to, um, for that. Like I said, newsletter, um, your discovery call, if you're a coach, a service-based business and you get people on the phone, that might be your engaging and nurturing process, right? You're getting to know each other, you're talking, you're learning about their vision. All of that is nurturing that happens before you actually ask them for the sale, all right? You may have free trainings, content, resources, some kind of way uh, that you're gonna consistently engage and nurture uh, the folks on your email list. Um, and, and not only obviously the engaging and nurturing is so key, um, but you also want to continue to stay top of mind, right? You, you don't want to just get them on your email list and they just sit there, right? You need to, it's like there's, they're in your living room and you need to entertain them, <laughs> right? Or they're just going to sit there and they're going to forget about you. Um, so you don't want that to happen. You want to engage and nurture them consistently. Once you uh, have done that in some way, shape, or form, uh, that may be a, a long process. It may be a short process, right? Your sales page may be 
your, your nurturing piece, right? And then you, boom, I'm asking you for the sale. Um, so that's the next part um, is, is actually selling, okay? And this is gonna happen to your email list. This is gonna be internal, right? Anyone who's actually um, opted in to your lead magnet, they're on your owned channels. Uh, now we're gonna be selling them in some kind of way. And so again, we do that through email. Uh, maybe you're launching and, and just running an email series that is ultimately the call to action at the end of every email is buy the click here to to purchase now whatever whatever the case you're leading them to sale to to a sale uh the end of a discovery call you've nurtured them you've learned about them now the end hey buy this i have this offer i think it would fit would you like to purchase it give me that credit card let's talk <laughs> right uh, or maybe you, pr you present a webinar and at the end of the training, you're walking them through all of the benefits of your offer and you're asking them for the sale. But that is a very important part of the process. We have to sell uh, in order to make money. Uh, you're doing this to make money. <laughs> so selling is a part of it. All right. And so once we get through selling, oh, y'all got a little color change there. Just ignore that. Um, once we do that, we're going to follow up. All right, and this is a piece that a lot of times we neglect. And I heard another, I'm um, full of just things that I hear uh, randomly that I hold on to, but I heard another little factoid that um, most of the sales that happen, especially for service-based businesses, um, but really product-based businesses too, that the sales happen in that second and third and fourth follow-up, right? Many times people are not gonna buy on the first time they hear it. So you need to continue to follow up um, which reminds me of uh, one more thing, retargeting ads, um, which Abu is going to be hooking y'all up with that um, information. Y'all are going to love Abu if you're not familiar with him. Um, but we don't accept that first no. We don't stop at that first no. We're leaving money on the table if we ask for the sale, they said no, and we just leave it at that, right? No, we going to follow back on up, let them know, send them a personalized email. Maybe you have an abandoned cart uh, email. Somebody put something in their cart they never purchased. Um, Shopify, right? They'll send an automatic abandoned cart email. Many uh, cart platforms will do that. Uh, maybe you reach out to folks who, who didn't buy yet and you, have, you, add, you offer a Q&A session. Hey, do you have any questions about the offer? I'd love to share more. Um, love to make sure your questions are answered. And then you ask them for the sale again, right? and then retargeting ads, which again, we'll, we'll talk about later. But um, the, the concept is we're gonna follow up. We're not gonna accept the first no. Um, so hopefully, <laughs> I know that that is super duper fast. Um, give me an emoji in the chat to um, let me know how you're feeling after that first sort of walkthrough of what an ongoing marketing strategy looks like, all right? Drop an emoji in the chat so I can know how, get a pulse check of how you guys are doing. I know it's a lot. Everyone, uh, everyone is going to have a unique strategy, depending on what they are uh, building. Uh, but you're going to have these elements in there at some point. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm getting some emojis. Good. Okay, cool. Antoine didn't even do an emoji. He just gave me some words. I will take it. Yes. Thank you. All right. Cool. So um, I want to get this done. So we're going to keep rolling. Um, we're going to move into launch strategy. All right. So again, you see launching is a linear process. All right. And it's going to have much of the same, some similar components as an ongoing marketing strategy. Uh, and some things are going to be a little bit different. Um, okay, cool. So uh, with launching, much like the first strategy, we're going to have an awareness portion, right? So we've already kind of talked about what awareness looks at. Uh, we're doing something out on public channels, social media, TV, wherever, an event, wherever you're going out into the public, letting them know about something and trying to bring new people into your world, all right? Once you, um, and many of our, our launch strategies have an awareness phase, right? I didn't write that down, um, but there's a phase, right? You may spend two weeks just simply pumping and pushing your lead magnet, right? You may spend six weeks or six months where you are just just getting new leads. I'm offering this lead magnet. I'm letting y'all know what I have and I'm just building a list right now, right? So depending on what your launch looks like, what your timeline looks like, 
your, your um, sort of awareness segment with this lead magnet uh, can last anywhere from two weeks to however long you want it to last, right? Um, but again, the goal is to generate new leads and get them onto your email list, right? Um, so again, here are some more examples of what some lead magnet, magnets might be. Uh, keep in mind that they don't always have to be free. You can do a product as well and the product can serve as a lead magnet. Uh, once you get people into your system, right, and um, depending on what your timeline is, you decide to run a uh, pre-launch, right? Uh, and your pre-launch might be somewhere between, you know, a week. It could be three weeks. It could be um, typically between one and three weeks you're going to see uh, pre-launches run. But basically that's when you're offering some sort of a limited time offer or discount uh, on your offer or some sort of bonuses if you purchase by a certain date, right? So um, you see people, new authors do this a lot, or not just new authors, but um, when people are putting out books, uh, you can buy these packages and you get all these bonuses uh, with the package that you buy. And you know, you have to buy by this date in order to get those bonuses, right? You get the intimate sit down with an author um, if you buy by this certain date, right? That, that's your pre-launch. Um, and, and, and the purpose of your pre-launch is to sort of, um, you're, gonna, you're, you're testing interest, right? Do, do people, are people interested enough in this offer to actually buy it? Um, and also you're generating uh, income, you know, up front. Let's, let's, let's get some money um, flowing in. Uh, sometimes uh, your pre-launch happens right after the lead magnet. They download it and then maybe that next page is like, hey, here's my offer. You get a discount for the next 20 minutes, right? Um, so, so your pre-launch can look different uh, depending on what your unique situation is. But typically, again, it's something you're doing internally uh, to the folks on your email list um, who opted in to your lead magnet, right? Uh, so many times people will use a, a webinar as their lead magnet. Then they will pitch uh, the offer that they haven't yet announced on social media yet. They'll pitch it on the webinar right and hey you guys are here you guys are going to get uh the chance to get uh this much off or like in my case with tribe right you guys are getting offered the day one uh package right so that <clears throat> you know after this time period ends this isn't going to be available so this is a deal that you need to jump on now right so that's a, a pre-launch method that you'll see a lot of times uh, or you might see uh, just a general email series, right? They opted in, they downloaded your neat lead magnet, and now you're sending them a series of emails that is uh, time-based. So, hey, you get this bonus if you buy this thing now, all right? So um, pre-launch is, again, it's something that happens internally to people who opted into your list. And typically, you haven't told the public about your offer yet. You're only telling people who have opted in uh, to your uh, to your list? All right. So after your pre-launch phase, uh, you know, ends how, whatever time you designate for that. Uh, that's when you go into your launch, your full-on launch. And uh, as you can see here by the channels, you can launch on social and publicly, and you're also launching internally. Right. Uh, you don't have to. You can just do an internal launch. Um, or if you don't have a list yet, you can just do a public launch. But um, for the most part, you're going to utilize all of your channels that you have, um, both publicly uh, and internally to uh, sell your offer, right? So this is when, during a launch phase, yo, uh, I've been secretive, I've been holding on to this amazing thing that I've created and now I'm finally announcing that it is here. You can buy it right now, go to this link, right? So you're letting social media know that, you're letting your email list know that, all of your messaging is no longer talking about the lead magnet, now it's just talking about this offer. You need to buy this offer, right? So during your launch, you're doing a lot of this, these same activities, right? You're running ads, you're speaking at events, you are um, employing your affiliate um, people, you are um, getting influencers interested in what you have to do so that they can share it with their audiences, right? You're doing all of these same activities, but now instead of it pointing to the lead magnet, now it's pointing to that sales page, right? What, whatever, you, um, whatever your offer sales page is, um, you're pointing it to that now, right? 
So mini launches, uh, they, they will last between two and four weeks. Um, most people want it to be as short as possible because launching is intense. Uh, two weeks feels like a long time. Um, so four weeks is just like an eternity when you're launching because it's, you're on, right? You're on all the time. Uh, so that's what launching looks like. Um, but you're giving people uh, this sense of urgency, right? Um, you're running these same activities, but you're letting them know, hey, you know, this offer is only available until this period of time, right? Um, you're, you're letting, you're, you're giving people that push. Um, a lot of times we don't buy unless there's a sense of urgency attached to it. All right. So there's a deadline, right? You need to buy it by this date, you know, hurry up and get it. Um, maybe you're offering some additional bonuses during the launch period. Um, maybe there's some other fun things associated when people buy during the launch um, and they need to buy during that date in order to benefit from all of those amazing goodies that you're offering. After that date passes, that's when we get into post-launch, right? And that's when, you know, if you guys have signed up for anyone's email list and you, you receive the emails and they're like, you know, we just decided to extend this offer one more day just for you. You know, I know we said it was over yesterday, but, you know, if you buy today, <laughs> you will still be able to get, you know, X, Y, and Z, right? So, so that post-launch piece uh, is when you're kind of giving people just a little bit of a grace period to still purchase your offer. And, um, you know, you can decide whether or not to utilize a post-launch um, if you hit your launch goal during launch. Um, sometimes you can hit your launch goal during pre-launch, right? So you don't even have to go through all of this if you don't want to. Um, so post-launch is really going to be one of those things that is up to you um, on if you still need to um, generate sales or, or whatever your goal is and utilize that grace period uh, to get to extend that to people to give them an opportunity to still um, purchase, um, but still giving them that kind of sense of urgency. So you're going to do that via email. Typically, that's going to be happening internally um, just to the folks who are on your email list. You can, you can kind of do post-launch activities to publicly, but they're a little less in effective as they are internally. So you kind of focus your efforts on the people who've really opted in. Because um, if they haven't opted in by this point, you know, they're probably just not interested. So, woo, that's a lot. That's a whole lot. Y'all still with me? Let me know in the chat if you're with me. Give me a, give me a four in the chat if you're still with me. Um, okay, good. We are all set. Um, I just remembered that I didn't actually finish um, the challenge for the month. Um, so I'm going to let you, I'm going to just tell you guys what it is. Um, actually, I'm going to type it in as I'm talking to you guys. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, so this month is going to be a little different. We're not going to have weekly challenges. We're going to have a month challenge um, because I, you all, the only thing I want you guys to do this month is to uh, build out your, uh, your marketing strategies, right? Uh, so I want you guys this month to set your sales goal for your launch. Good. looks like you guys are still with me. I want you guys to set whatever your goal is. Um, it may be sales. It may just be, you know, awareness, whatever, whatever your goal is, set that goal uh, for your launch and or ongoing marketing strategy. Again, I strongly encourage you to, at minimum, create an ongoing marketing strategy. If you need to launch, then create a launch strategy, right? But I want you guys to focus on this ongoing marketing strategy piece. All right. Um, so those are those two pieces. And then uh, if you're having trouble with any of these elements, please, 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 let's come. Um, let me help you develop a strategy <laughs> at, office, at office hours uh, this month. So please, please, please attend if and whenever you can and utilize the resources. Um, another thing that I'm going to have available for you guys that isn't quite ready yet is I'm going to have a toolkit of resources for you to utilize this month. Um, these are going to be templates and uh, resources that are going to just support the work that you're going to be doing to build out your marketing strategies. So that is coming. I will make a, uh, you know, send out an email and post and stuff when that is ready. Uh, but you guys will have access to some really, really great resources that are going to help you guys um, with the various pieces that you're going to need help with. Um, so 
that's all we've got for tonight. And so I'm going to go ahead and end this recording.